In this program, we're going to look at a way of predicting the acid-base behavior of particular salt solutions. Let's start by looking at how that salt would be formed. We would begin with some sort of base and mix it with an acid. And that would then result in the prediction of our salt. So that's what we're looking at, the behavior of this particular salt. I'm going to refer to these substances that created the salt as the parent base and the parent acid. The salt can be thought of as ionic in nature and has two parts, a positively charged cation and a negatively charged anion. That negatively charged anion is the conjugate base of that acid. In a similar fashion, this cation is the conjugate acid of this base. And that's my first statement here. Ionic salt contains two parts. The positively charged cation is capable of donating a proton, either itself or by reacting with water. And the anion is capable of accepting acting as a base. It can accept a proton or somehow react with water um, and therefore be able to accept a proton. The second point I want to mention is the stronger the parent, the weaker its conjugate. Let me explain this by using some examples. HCl. HCl I have here and its equilibrium constant. It's a large number that's what we expect. So we expect this reaction being a strong acid to but go almost completely in one direction, producing H plus and Cl minus. So this here is my strong acid. And over here I've produced its base. Now, what about the strength of this base? Well, we have what the Ka is, it's 10 to the 7. So what's the ability of chlorine to react with water except a proton? What's its ability to act as a base? Well, if this substance accepts a proton, it would then form HCl, and we would then have OH minus. So my curiosity is what would that be in this situation? Well, we're given a relationship from a previous unit that Ka times Kb equals Kw. Now, let's assume we're at 25 degrees Celsius. We know what Kw is, so if we rearrange this, we can say Kb then is 10 to the minus 14 divided by Ka which is 10 to the 7. That gives me 10 to the minus 21. That is small. In fact, the amount of OH is going to be negligible. So in this situation, we're not going to get much of this. It's negligible. And being negligible, we're not going to therefore be able to alter the pH. This substance's ability to alter the pH is almost non-existent. Let's cons oh, and so as a result, a strong acid makes a very weak base. So strong makes very weak. As I'm saying here, the stronger the parent, the weaker its conjugate. Let's consider now a weaker acid, something down here, acetic acid, and its formula CH3 COOH. Now, it doesn't go one way. It's equilibrium. It's going to make a small amount of H plus and the acetate ion, CH3, COO minus. And we're given the equilibrium constant for that as 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. What's the ability of this to act as a base? So we're making a judgment about how much does the acetate ion 
react with water and cause this to take place. So it would accept a proton and make uh, our acetic acid and our OH ion. Well, in this particular uh, scenario, we isolate again for Kb by putting 10 to the minus 14 Kw over 1.8 times 10 to the minus 5. And when we solve for that, we get 5.6 times 10 to the minus 10. It's small, but not nearly as small as this is. So as a result, we get a very small amount of this. It's not negligible. And this then gives rise to the following, that if we have a weak acid, I emphasize weak here, we are going to make a weak, but not very weak, just a weak base. And we will have a small amount of base then created. So let's employ that now in this little table below. If I begin with a strong acid, sorry, a strong base, I will make a very weak cation or a very weak acid. If I begin with a strong acid, I will make a very weak anion or a very weak base. This then corresponds to a situation where neither the cation or the anion can react with water and essentially the concentration of the uh, hydrogen ion will remain unchanged, being just that of water. So the pH would be seven. Let's try a different scenario now where we mix a strong base, say something like sodium hydroxide with my weak acid. Well, the strong base will make a very weak acid, very same as above. This, however, will create a weak base. So this weak base is created by this weak acid. Since I have a weak base now present, that's then going to cause my pH to be in the basic range or above 7. On the other hand, if I begin with a weak base, I will create a weak acid. And the strong acid that's apparent will create a very weak base. So in this situation, I have a weak acid present and the pH would therefore be less than seven. What would happen if they were both a weak acid mix with a weak base? Well, then you would create a cation would be weakly acidic, and the anion would be weakly basic. And we really wouldn't know which is each unless we could somehow compare the equilibrium constants of these two. So we would need some knowledge of what is Ka and what is Kb, and whichever is larger, then that would then determine our final pH. Let's apply this now to predicting what the pH would be of this solution. Well, let's start with its parents. To make the Na, that would probably come from NaOH. To make the carbonate, that would come from the acid, carbonic acid. That would then react to make sodium carbonate and water. And to balance it, I would need a two here, and I'll make two here. So this is a strong base, the source of my sodium ion. So that, the sodium K 
cation that's present came from a strong base. So this would be a very weak acid. The carbonate portion of this, the CO3 2 minus, this came from carbonic acid. That's an example of a weak acid. Being a weak acid, this then would be a weak base. So my ionic salt then has a very weak acid characteristic, but just a weak base, this being a bit stronger. So that then means the pH of my solution would be dominated by this species, and the pH would therefore be greater than 7. Um, just to show you the reaction that goes on here, our water is capable of reacting with that carbonate ion. That carbonate ion is able to accept a proton and therefore form the bicarbonate ion. Now that would now be 1 minus. And we would then produce the hydroxide ion. And there would be the basic nature of my solution. So just remember those two points. The ionic salt is capable of acting both as an acid as an, and a base. The second, the stronger the parent, the weaker its conjugate. Thanks for watching.